step zero, factor. Now, I might, you might find that factoring with a negative out in front is hard. So you might even want to just factor out the negative first. It might make your factoring easier. So I'm going to show you that. And now to factor 2x squared minus 5x plus 2. To get 2x squared, it's going to have to be 2x and x. To get 2 is going to either be 1 and 2 or 2 and 1. I'm going to want to put my 2 here and my 1 here so that my outside is 4, my inside is 1, because I need to make negative 5 in the end. And so they would both need to be negative to make negative 5. And if I quickly multiply that out to do a check, sure enough, I get 2x squared, I get positive 2 at the end, and my outside and inside combine to give me negative 5. Nothing simplifies, so step 1, when you're looking at your non-permissible values, x can't equal 1, that's going to be a vertical asymptote at x equals 1. So nothing simplified ends up with a vertical asymptote. Step two, looking at whether or not we have a horizontal asymptote or an oblique asymptote. Well, maybe you're getting good at just looking at the degrees. You see that we have a degree that's higher in our numerator than our denominator. And this resulted in holes or oblique asymptotes. There's no holes in this one, so this time it will be an oblique asymptote. If you like the shortcut of always starting with, well, what's my highest degree? My highest degree is an x squared. So if I go in my numerator, I have minus 2x squared. In my denominator, I have no x squared. Well, this is not possible. That also is telling you that you're going to have an oblique asymptote. How do we find that oblique asymptote? We actually divide, use synthetic division to figure out what we're going to get, and see what our result is. So setting this up with synthetic division, we are dividing negative 2x squared plus 5x minus 2. So we negative 2x squared plus 5x minus 2, and we're dividing by x minus 1, so we opposite sign, we put a plus 1 outside. Bring the first number down, multiply, add, multiply, add. The oblique asymptote will be at minus 2x plus 3. You can ignore the remainder. doesn't matter how big that remainder is, you can ignore it. And that's your oblique asymptote. Why is that? Why is that? Well, if you wrote the division statement, so polynomial is dq plus 3 yeah. plus r. If you wrote that out, our polynomial was minus 2x squared plus 5x minus 2. We divided by x minus 1. We ended up with minus 2x plus 3 and a remainder of plus 1. That's our division statement. Now, we're trying to graph this. Let's move this over to the side here. We're trying to graph negative 2x squared plus 5x minus 2 divided by x minus 1. Okay. Now, if I wanted to get this, can you see that if I divided both sides by x minus 1? Now, if you divide both sides by x minus 1, you have to divide everything on the right-hand side by x minus 1. It's going to give you 2x plus 3, or negative 2x plus 3, plus our remainder also divided by that x minus 1. And our asymptotes, both horizontal asymptotes and oblique asymptotes, tell us what happens to the graph, what does it get close to when x gets really, really big. And so when x gets really, really big, can you see that this, the remainder part, gets really close to zero. Never, get, never, never is equal to zero, but gets close to zero. And so that's why your graph approaches 
that line. Okay, so that's the reason that your oblique asymptote is where it is. So now, step three, all of our intercepts. Y-intercept is easy. You plug in 0 for x. So if we go and scroll up to our original equation, can you see that if you plug in 0 for x, you're going to get negative 2 over negative 1. X-intercepts. Our x-intercepts, if we go to our factored form, your x-intercepts are only where your numerator is equal to 0. It's already been factored. Can you see when x is equal to 2 and when x is equal to 1 half, your numerator will be equal to 0? So we put in all the information that we have so far. We might need to find some more points. But we have vertical asymptote at x equals 1. We have an oblique asymptote. Oh, that one's really crooked. Let's put some point. Our oblique asymptote has a y-intercept of 3, a slope of negative 2, down 2 over 1. And now I'm going to try and draw my dotted line through those nicely. OK. Close enough. And we can label both of our asymptotes. So this one is at x equals 1, and this asymptote is at minus 2x plus 3. Our y-intercept is at 2. So we have this point at 0, 2. Our x-intercept is at a half, 1 half, 0. And so based on those two points, can you see that you could graph one section of your graph? This graph has one vertical asymptote, and so the domain is separated into two sections, x values less than 1 and x values bigger than 1. For this section, when the x values are less than 1, you can graph that. But we do need another point. So let's see what happens when you plug in x equals 2, something to the right of our vertical asymptote. Again, I'm going to go up to my factored form here. I'm going to plug in 2. Can you see on the bottom you would get 1? Negative, plug in 2, 4 minus 1 is 3, and plug in 2. Uh oh, did we just forget to label that? We knew that point. I just didn't label my other x-intercept. Wait a minute. OK. It's not actually on that asymptote. It would be over a little bit. It's the problem with not drawing things accurately or to scale with the graph paper. That point is enough to tell you that this section up towards your asymptote and approaching your asymptote in that direction as well. Now another thing that some, um, you might see it in the textbook or if you do the online pre-quizzes that they look at is how did I know that when I got close to 1, that my graph should go up forever. How do I know that? Well, one of the things that they sometimes say is look at your factored form and just to worry about is it going to go to positive infinity, go up forever, or negative infinity. So if we plugged in a number really, really, really close to 1, but from the right-hand side. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to check, how do I know that this is going up forever? How do I know it didn't end up going down forever? 
So if I plugged in a value really, really close to 1 from the right-hand side, could you see like 1.01 .01 would be an example, or 1.0001, .001, something just a little bit bigger than 1. If I look at that, if I plug in something just a little bit bigger than 1, can you see that 1.01 .01 minus 1 is going to be a positive number really close to 0? If I plug in 1.01 .01 into here, it's going to be close to 2. 2 minus 1 is just positive. And if I plug something just a little bit bigger than 1 into this bracket, it's going to be negative. If you multiply all your negatives and positives out, that whole fraction is going to end up positive. So you can also use that to figure out, well, does it go up to positive infinity or down to negative infinity? Because my whole fraction ended up being positive, it also tells me that it has to be going up. All right, questions for this one are number five, and we will do one more example. 